Hello and welcome to Down the Scope. Today we'll be looking at the histology of the epiphyseal growth plate, also known as the physis. The growth plate is a cartilaginous structure located at the ends of long bones in growing animals. Long bones, such as those in the limbs, can be divided into two anatomic areas, the diaphysis in the middle and the two epiphyses at each end. The growth plate is located between the diaphysis and the epiphysis. New bone is produced here, which lengthens the bone as the animal grows. This way of forming bone is called endochondral ossification. The growth plate consists of several layers of chondrocytes, cells that produce cartilage. These are arranged in layers with different functions. The first layer is the zone of resting cartilage. Here the chondrocytes are relatively inactive. They serve as a reserve of cartilage cells for further growth and replacement. As you would expect for inactive cells, they have relatively little cytoplasm and dark, condensed spindeloid nuclei. They sit inside little spaces in the cartilage matrix. All of this glassy blue material. These spaces are called lacunae. Next comes the zone of proliferation. In this zone, the chondrocytes undergo rapid division, leading to the growth and thickening of the cartilage. The division occurs in just a few layers of cells, which means that the growth of the entire long bone depends on this tiny proportion of chondrocytes. You'll notice that there is a much higher density of chondrocytes here. The daughter cells form distinct columns, aligning themselves parallel to the length of the bone. Moving down, we reach the zone of hypertrophy. Here, the chondrocytes mature and enlarge. They have much more cytoplasm and the nuclei look larger and more irregular. The increase in cell size has pushed the cartilage matrix into long parallel lines. There are marked metabolic changes that occur in the cells. For example, they begin to produce huge amounts of alkaline phosphatase, an enzyme that produces phosphate ions which are necessary for bone formation. They also alter the components of the cartilage matrix, producing more collagen 10, for example, which prepares the matrix for calcification. In fact, the hypertrophic zone is sometimes referred to as the zone of hypertrophy and calcification. This refers to the entry of calcium ions into the matrix. These calcium ions will then be used to form the mineral portion of bone, a molecule called hydroxyapatite, which is made up of calcium, phosphorus, carbonate, magnesium, sodium, manganese, zinc, copper, and fluoride. Further down, we move into the zone of cartilage degeneration. Calcification limits the ability of nutrients to reach the chondrocytes, and they undergo apoptosis, a form of programmed cell death. This leaves only the thin columns of cartilage matrix with empty space between them. This empty space is quickly invaded by capillaries from the marrow cavity of the diaphysis, which allows population by osteogenic cells, these poorly differentiated small and numerous cells. These will differentiate into osteoblasts that will line the cartilage matrix ready to convert it into bone. You can spot osteoblasts as large cuboidal cells with quite a bit of cytoplasm that are lining the edges of the cartilage and part cartilage part bone columns. These columns are often referred to as spicules. The areas that have been converted to bone stay in pink while the cartilage retains its glassy blue appearance, often as a central core. You'll notice that some of the osteoblasts have entered the bony spicules and formed lacunae, where they will mature to osteocytes. The bone that's formed here is a type called woven bone, which is immature and relatively disorganized. Bony spicules made of woven bone are also called primary spongiosa. Changes are also occurring in the bone marrow spaces between the primary spongiosa. There are huge numbers of hematopoietic cells which will be busy churning out new red and white blood cells. Moving further into the diaphysis, we have the final zone, the zone of resorption. In this zone, the primary spongiosa is remodeled. That means there is a combination of bone loss due to osteoclasts and new bone production by osteoblasts. Ultimately, this will form mature trabecular bone called the secondary spongiosa. The woven bone is replaced by lamella bone, so-called because you can often see lines or layers in the bone matrix. This is because the collagen fibers in lamella bone are nicely organized in parallel layers, whereas those in woven bone are random and disorganized. You can spot osteoclasts as large multinucleated cells that are present at the bone margin. They are a type of histiocytic cell, similar to macrophages, 
that specialize in dissolving bone by attaching to the bone matrix and releasing enzymes and acid. Active osteoclasts are often found in depressions in the bone, known as Hauschip's lacunae. The cell membrane of the osteoclast, which is next to the bone matrix, often has lots of microvilli to increase the surface area, acid and enzyme secretion. This feature is called the ruffled border. Once the secondary spongiosa is formed, it is continually subject to remodeling, depending on mechanical and hormonal factors. Bone might be deposited in areas of increased mechanical stress, or it could be resorbed if the body needs more calcium or phosphorus. That's all for today. Hopefully that all made sense. If you have any questions or have a topic for future videos, let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and until next time, goodbye.